a dare, a female dare, red, a drop of golden sun. <laughs> Me, uh, uh, yeah, me, a name I call myself uh, a longer way More to energy, run. more energy, more passion So, a needle's rolling thread Love, no to follow So, tea, I drink with jam and bread And that will bring us back to Do, do. Yeah Well done, your singing is, is Is a bit, I know, I know, I know But your marketing is better <laughs> Hello and welcome to the 91 Podcast, the show where we dig deep into people's passions with the hope to inspire, educate, and motivate you. On today's episode, we have digital marketing expert, Michael Abbe Silva. Welcome to the studio, Michael. We're so happy to have you here. So happy to be here. Uh, beautiful setup and yeah, I'm raring to go. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so Michael, tell me what exactly is digital marketing and why do we need it? Right. So digital marketing is as a, essentially marketing but on the digital space. So getting to people, if you haven't got a physical shop or location, or even if you have a physical shop or a location, the the digital marketing helps drive people to you. Mm. So because for any business, what you want is customers, people to come, people to sell to, a product or service. So digital marketing helps you get to those people. So in a nutshell, it's just getting you out there to the world. Okay, so what you mean basically is making noise on social media? Yeah, 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 yeah making noise on social media, but the right noise. The right okay, noise. when you say the right noise, what could be the wrong noise? Well... Because <laughs> I hear every sort of publicity, even bad publicity, sells. Yes, it does, but if it depends on what you're selling as well. Mm. If you're a property expert, you don't want bad noise. You want people to know what you're actually doing. And mm. But I guess if you're in the entertainment industry, any noise is good noise. <laughs> But yeah, that's where we come in. So some people want to like they want to be famous or all these celebrity kind of people, mm. but they're selling a business. So that if you're trying to post like you're a celebrity mm. and you're running a business, it's not it's necessarily going to marry. So okay. this is what I do. I help people to sort of channel their passion into and getting the right response from people. Okay. So give me an example of the sort of um, success stories you've had with businesses you've worked with. Um, yes. Um, one of my first clients, which is a, a property consultant, mm. he was he 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 had a good um, dream of what he wanted to do already. So it was easy to work with him. Mm. So I'm currently working with him, growing his following. He wasn't too good about with the social media stuff, but we've gone in there, revamped the content mm. and... Honestly, he's very happy with our work. And shout out to Announce Property, if you see this. Because, yeah, he's doing great things, helping pe- first-time buyers buy their first homes mm. and stuff. And I hope he's giving you some free property. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, a lot of tips I've picked up from him, definitely, okay. which I will be using. And, yeah, he's he's a, he's a very good guy in terms of he knows what he wants. And that's that's one of the things I love about people that know what they want because I've worked with some people that don't know what they want mm. but they just want followers on Instagram you know you mentioned growing <laughs> following you know you know some people actually go out there and buy followers you can buy oh. 10,000 20,000 30,000 so what's the is there a disadvantage to that because they're Ultimate. making it you know they're making themselves look so good okay so the first basic disadvantage is you're only getting people you're mm. not getting customers Okay. So if you're selling, if I'm if I'm trying to sell something, okay, maybe I have a flower shop, for example, and I just buy followers. Mm. What if fifty or eighty percent of the followers are not even interested in? Oh, not even real. Followers. Are not even real because mm. there are, there are all these places where people they have a whole setup of phones and they're just following following. They get your money and you think, oh, I've got followers. But then no one is actually buying your service or what you're trying to sell. Mm. So buying followers is a complete no-no from from me. And I never advise anyone. So you're saying it's bad on all levels? On all levels. On a, unless you, unless it's just for your ego. If you mm. just want to say, I've got 50k <laughs> followers, then fine. Speaking of ego, <laughs> I want to ask you another thing. What about verification? <laughs> right. So this very good question, actually. So verification is good mm. if you're a brand. Mm. a big brand or a celebrity or you've got a massive following already mm. if you haven't it's 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 not really worth it i would say well why is it actually good because back in the days you know 
people, it was hard to be verified. So you mm. saw someone was verified. You respected them. This must be a notable yes. figure, you know, notable mm. business. But now anybody can pay eleven pounds and be verified. Yes, but the the main reason I think this is good is because of the scam part of Instagram. So people's okay. accounts get. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> is it when you... Um, when they hack into your accounts. Yeah, <laughs> hack, that's the yeah. one. So people's accounts get hacked mm. and this sort of prevents that from happening. Funny story, this actually happened to my wife. Your wife <laughs> yeah. got hacked. My wife got <laughs> hacked and she's only got like a thousand or close to a thousand followers. And it was like... Oh. So why was she someone, hacked? Some, they hacked her account and created a dummy account mm. and with her pictures and everything. Oh. So, and the person is sending me messages going, <laughs> oh, hello, uh, you know, kind of like I'm in trouble or something. And I'm like, oh, I just saw you like, I, I knew it was a scam. So mm. I, I played along like, I saw you like five minutes ago. Who's picking up um, our boy from school? Da, da, da. So I think the guy thought, oh, I'm, yeah, I've, <laughs> this is somebody I've gone into the wrong. Yeah. So in the end, I even, I just went around, I was like, oh, you're new to the work. Because if you're, if you're, <laughs> if you're actually doing these kind of mistakes, you, you, should have, you should have checked <laughs> if you're going to do it. And he was, he, we just exchanged some messages and I blocked him off. So mm. to prevent people like identity theft, yeah, it's good to be verified. But uh, again, I'll say you need to have a decent following. Because mm. if you have like 500, 200, don't pay for it. Don't pay to be verif- for verification. There's no point. Mm. It's only to protect you or your brand or your business. Mm. And actually, business pages cannot get verified, which is something Instagram. Ooh. Yeah, okay. so you have to be a creator or someone well-known, at least, or a real person to be able to, to, be, able to be verified. Okay. Yeah. So you can't verify. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I found this out recently with one of my clients because he mm. had a business page and we're trying to ver- do the verification mm. thing. He has about 3,000 followers and it just wasn't what the option wasn't even there mm. so we thought okay we change it to a creator page and then, and it, then it works so i was like okay. it's funny you're saying that because i did try to write <laughs> <laughs> for my business pictures yeah business, and it, it was, didn't go well ah, so that's that's a free tip for <laughs> they you they turned it to my name and everything yeah so yeah, just, yeah i had to put it on hold for on a hold while for, yeah but it's if you want to it's absolutely fine i'll say do your research as mm. well as to the benefits of it and also, I know when you post certain things as a verified account, you get pushed out more. Okay. Yeah. So that's also a benefit. But if everybody gets verified, then what's the point? There's nothing special about it. Then it still comes it, back yeah. to content, what you're creating mm. and how you're creating it and how you're optimizing it, mm. which is where I come like My in. husband always says content is king. <laughs> it, it is the king. It is the king. <laughs> 100%. So how did you get into this? Have you always been doing digital marketing? No, no, I haven't always been doing it. So I have a background of IT networking. So I've okay. always been good around computers and stuff to start. Okay. That was my base. And social media is something we all, well, grew, well, maybe my old generation, <laughs> we grew into and we kind of like Facebook and love and stuff, Facebook yeah. and stuff. So social media is not anything hard to mm. me. That's how I always seen it anyway. But on a personal level, I didn't like to put myself on social media but i always found it interesting like oh what if i did something that would get someone's attention in brazil in italy in like that always fascinated me but Mm. i didn't fully go into it until let's say i'll say about after covid wow that's when i fully went into it but i worked with a couple of i did a lot of freelance work Mm. because just money on the side trying to make extra i did some logos here and there just trying to make money just then that's how i really stumbled into it because when i was doing it i had a friend who's kind of into it mm-hmm. and he said to me you let i've got a job for you let's do this we did that job for a client and then he was like bro you can do this oh. set up your thing and start but i was reluctant thinking oh. I don't want to sell up a company now and all of what about tax, making excuses. Basically, my mindset wasn't wasn't yeah. right to do it yet. But I think 2022, that's when I fully got into it. Mm-hmm. That's when I thought, okay, I'm going to start doing this. Let's do this. And I registered my company in November 2022. Mm. So what's your company registered at? Uh, MS Digital. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah, Michael Silver. Michael Silver. <laughs> Silver Digital. So do you do this full time? Yes. Mm. And how is that? Because I know when you go into something you're passionate about full time, it's always seems yeah, like financially. I, a bit. Yeah, in the beginning, I wasn't full time. Mm. <laughs> so let me stress that I was doing both, you know, working. Then I reduced my working to about four days. 
so that I could focus on this. And last year, January, it just kind of kicked off because I remember when I started, my friend said, you won't get a client for six months. Wow. So just keep going. Now, you have to push through that. But I got one in a month. <laughs> So that really motivated me. So that really motivated me to go. Even though when I got the first one, nothing came again until about March. Mm. But still, at least I knew I was like, okay, at least I'm I'm going now. I can mm. I can do this. So throughout the year, it's been good. I had people I worked with long term. I'm still working with. I have some people I worked short term. They just wanted a quick boost of their stuff for the summer. Mm. And yeah, it's been amazing so far. I can't I can't complain. So how did you really get into digital marketing? Um, I would say what really pushed me into it was going through the COVID outbreak and the lockdown and everything like that. Because even the year before, I, I I was made redundant from my job. And then I got a new job yeah. right literally the same month when the lockdown was announced. Wow. So that really put a lot of things on hold for me and the family with my wife having to do a lot of the heavy lifting because she, she was still... Um, getting paid and still working even as well but for me it was such a time where I thought I, I can't keep doing this like I, I really can't depend on a job I need to create something mm. that I'm generating and at least I know even if anything happens the buck is on me and I'm not waiting on anyone else mm. to do what I need to do so that for me was was the first sort of first point where I started to look at what I need to do mm. and I found digital marketing. And to be fair, all the things that involve, that is involved in digital marketing, I could do. So I just needed to sort of practice and I took it from there. How did that make you feel? Because I know a lot of people who might have been in your situation might have gotten, you know, depressed. Or... Oh, no, I mean, don't get me wrong. The depression, <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was real, it was real. But, you know, again, I'm a big believer of mindset. Mm. That's something that I've come to cultivate over the years and I feel like any situation you're in you have to just find the positive mm. to try and get out of it so if your mindset is not right you will, the depression will will be on you and you you'll be you find it so hard to shake so I'd say a positive mindset as well helps you overcome whatever so whatever goals you're looking to achieve if you find yourself stuck just find a positive there's always a positive so just find it and go from there. So what sort of jobs have you done, you know, apart from digital marketing? What kind of jobs were you into? I'll give you a funny one. Mm. I used to work in a betting shop. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> when I was younger and it was honestly the worst experience for me. I worked with some good people mm. who I'm still friends with to this day. But the whole idea of taking money from people, even though they're not taking it, but mm. they're, you're willingly giving them, but they're not saying no. It must have been exciting, though, a betting shop. No. You know, the chances of making money. No, no. Why? Because obviously there are things in place. We work in there, we can't make any money. We can't oh. make any money. You can't even put a bet on or anything so like no that. Benefits. So no benefits <laughs> to me, no. But to the people, I just felt it was a wrong thing, the way some people, some vulnerable people who don't have that strong willpower to say no to something like, okay, if you want to just do a £10, do it and go home. But these guys do 10 and they want the 10 back. Mm. So they keep going and keep going. And before you know it, whole paycheck gone, coming to cry like, oh, I, one guy, whole paycheck, Christmas time. Then he comes to us. I've got three girls. My wife was expecting me to buy presents. Da, 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 da. The money is gone. Yes, they said they have all these gamble aware and all these things. All those things, honestly, they're not as strong as they say it is. If someone bans themselves says okay you can do a self ban where you don't play you can go online online is not as it's not as restricted as yeah, in no the shop in the shop we can physically tell them we've got their pictures even like yo no go away we are not meant to be here but they can just go online and do it so for me that just made me know that i don't want to have anything to do with betting mm -hmm. and one of that is actually one of the reasons i was like no 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 this working for certain type of companies, I'm not gonna do it. You because, want the word for yourself. Yeah. My soul can't take mm -hmm. taking someone's money, especially when you know that these people actually believe they can win. But mm -hmm. the the whole machine thing, they say, Oh, you guys are the it's it's just for the company to make more to money. To be honest, I don't bet, but there's some things like you know these things of win a house. Win oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> old maze and all that, all that you stuff. Try, you have to try and you get try, into you that. Try and then 
Doesn't what was work. the one that I did? Um, Tram Tramway Park. So where these guys? Oh yeah, I d- I did that. I, I did the last one. I was I was irritated <laughs> because I was already I kept planning. Believing. I was like, God, do it for me. <laughs> I was already, I had a whole, I had a small board where I was putting things like, okay, so we're going to have this three bedroom <gasps> house. Da, da, da. When they announced the thing, and I, I was. I added it to my prayer point. <laughs> That's the second time I've done it. Then. Really? Yeah, first oh, like, yeah, I've done it twice I was as like, well. I'll hear my name, my name. Well, then, say. That first time, I only bought one ticket. So I was, it was just like, but this time, I actually went. How many tickets? Like, 80 buy? tickets. Man. 80 tickets. <laughs> How much did that cost you? Over 100 pounds, though. Hey. At least one, one something. I think almost one seventy or something. I paid hundred pounds yeah. just going like that just because go. I believed. I thought, <laughs> nah, <laughs> this is it. I was even looking at houses. I was like, should I get three hundred k house and then one fifty get another house like run down one and me- I was thinking, but it will still happen anyway. That I believe. I believe. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not waiting on them. But it was. It was nice at the time because I just thought it's exciting. I think yeah. when you do those things, but then. Like the betting, you know, you're doing something, you just keep going, keep going, going you keep no, believing. There's and no that, winning that. In might that might be even a false, you know, mm-hmm. false belief. Because false I've, hope. honestly, I feel like they just let you win just to, to, to suck you in. Mm. Then you go and you think, yeah, I've won. The best thing to do in a bench show, if you put 10 pounds and you get back even 20, just walk just out. Just walk with out. It. At least you go, and buy, go and buy yourself some Chinese or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But if you think you're going to make, Maybe salary money from a betting shop, you're joking. 100%. Nah. So can you give us like maybe five tips for individuals or businesses on how to, you know, boost their social media and their marketing? Right. So um, the first problem I see that businesses have with market, digital marketing in general is the, the consistency. Mm. And that's a problem with anyone, to be honest, because we all have times where we're not quite up to it, but yeah. we still have to. Sometimes you have the energy. You have pushing, the energy. Pushing, you're like, let's and go. And then, you know, you one, know, week later, posts, then one week later, oh, I can't do it anymore. For sure. So the way, we, the one tip I give all my clients to combat this is scheduling your content. Okay. So create a batch of content, 10 videos, schedule it, uh, maybe three a week, depending on how you want to post. And that's the best way to get over that. I'm constantly, oh, I don't know what to post today. Mm-hmm. So prepare. If you don't plan to fail, you're, what's the, what's the <laughs> you thing? You just twisted the whole thing. <laughs> if you, don't, you fail to plan, you plan to fail. What? <laughs> if you don't plan to fail. <laughs> but yeah, that's the first tip. Uh, second tip, I would say create quality content. Mm, when you say quality content, what do you mean? So do even we go from... online and be, you know, twerking or something? <laughs> Get you the well, if, if that's the if, if if it's each to their own. If that's what you're 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 trying to get, do what you have to do. But no, I, in terms of quality, I mean more video. If you're okay. doing video based content, get make your video good quality mm. because grainy video or shooting on the front facing camera is always a bit. You know, if, especially if you're trying to run a professional sort of yeah. um, profile, you need good quality to catch people's attention and. That also leads to the next tip, which is um, hooks for your content. Hooks. So, so what I mean by hook is you need to have something to grab the viewer's attention. Mm. So, for example, if you see um, a headline that says, don't do this mm. with your digital marketing. You're Does more that likely intrigue you? To, yeah. Exactly. If you say do this, I'm like, oh, why are you pushing <laughs> yeah, your stuff Yeah, like yeah me? I don't want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so things like that help mm. with getting people engaged to your content. Mm. And then that actually leads to my next point nicely, which is engagement. Mm. So you have to engage with the people that are following you as well. Okay. So when, when you get these followers, you're not just packing them in a sack and taking them along. They will leave. Mm. That's that's standard. I never thought of it that way. Engaging <laughs> people that follow you. That follow you. Normally, I think just making content because oh, this is my content. If you like no, it, like no, it. No, no, Not you, actually going to you, check who's following you. You and have trying to, to check engage with them. when they comment. They like you to go back, get, return the favor. Mm. All of that also. So the time you liked my stuff, it wasn't a genuine like. Ah! Them. You only like it because <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Obviously, I would. Ge- I genuinely like your content. That's why. Right. That's privilege to be on here. <laughs> Gonna <laughs> sell it well, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, things like that helps because it's you're trying to create a community mm. of people engage with you because that builds trust. And when you're building mm. trust, 
you're more likely to get mm. someone who probably doesn't even want your service to think, I like this guy. Mm, let, let me get, let me, let me check it out. Let me see what's, what's mm. going on. So that engagement, how many have I said now? That's four. Is it three or, or four? three or four? <laughs> <laughs> I was just going Honestly, with this one. last point that you just made, yeah. I've never thought of it that oh. way. So now I'm actually going to go look who's following me. Yeah. What can I put that they're interested in mm. that they would enjoy? Yes. Not just dumping content Dump, because yeah. this is what I like, you know, yeah. stick to it, look at it. I mean, you will still get, you'll mm. still get people, but it's just from everything I've seen, mm. engagement helps. So even like doing a story, for example, asking a quiz or telling people or what mm. option, pick one. Even sometimes I see myself doing it. Mm. I don't even care what the question is. But when I see like a quiz or a poll, I just put it this out. one. <laughs> I want to see what people think of it. So I pick one. Mm. Oh, so 50% of people think da 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 da. Mm. So it's a way of getting your account going. Yeah, getting people engaged. People engaged with it. Interested. And that also, I'd say, would lead to the last point, which is just also finding out what your followers want. So mm. you might not know directly from them, but you can search for things that people are searching for. But how do I find out what my followers want? So if someone is following you already, mm. they have an, a little interest in what you're doing so that you can go on the internet and search for maybe what you do and it will lead you on their websites like um, there's one, answer the, the, answer the people? No, answer the public. Answer the public. They, you can search for what people are searching for mm. in okay, terms of what you are doing. Answer the public. Okay. Yeah. So that actually helps you to decide as well on the content you're making. Mm. That's that's that should have been my first point to be honest. Research before even starting any sort of posting. Mm. Because if you're just posting, it's okay, but at some point you burn out because you don't know what else to post. Mm. But that helps you keep on top of it with everything else, doing all those things together. You, you'll be fine. And this is only for businesses, right? Not for individuals. Um, businesses and sometimes individuals. Sometimes you want to post some cute pictures yes, of your kids. Yes, you know? yeah. <laughs> to be honest, that is fine. It's fine. If if you're a personal, if you're selling yourself, mm. that's fine. Because all those, those are what people want to see. People want to see that you're living a real life. Mm. You're not just a, a robot. <laughs> so things like that, it does help. It does help, 100%. Okay. So what are the challenges you see that people face when they start, you know, trying to market themselves mm. you've mentioned i think you mentioned that um you weren't really a social media person before yeah. in terms of posting myself yeah mm. that's that's a that's a challenge a lot of people face so what gave you the confidence to um i think it was just a change of mindset because mm. i started seeing it different i thought okay i could keep seeing it this way like oh i don't want to post i don't want to post or i could actually see it the other way like i could get an opportunity to do something i like or you never know who you meet. Mm. And yeah, it's exactly like networking. That's how I, I just started seeing it. Like I stopped seeing it as a, oh, I'm putting myself out there. It was more of, I never know who I'm going to meet. Mm. So I think if you want to get over that barrier, it's just a mindset. Just believe that you can make something good out of this situation as opposed to thinking of the negative. And if you post something and nobody likes it, nobody comments. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Honestly. You go and delete it. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, no. So that's that's a that's a great point, actually. Likes doesn't equal mm. you're making money. Hundred mm. percent. Your likes, you can have a thousand likes, but what what are you getting from those likes? Do you have it's a, a validation? E well, that's that's all it is. Do you have an ebook that you're trying to sell with those likes? If you have an ebook and they're liking it, but no one's actually buying it, mm. you have to really think about that's and that's again, it's a mindset shift away from the likes post what you want to post the people is meant for they will find it mm. and they will they will buy from you or take your course or whatever you want to do so I, i'd say just don't focus on likes because likes can be deceiving mm. it can be unless you can also in, be discouraging it can be discouraging <laughs> Especially if there are no likes. Yeah. You post something for people. Why didn't you like it? You know, call your husband. Call your <laughs> like that post. Come on, like that. I like. know. I know. It's um, that's the world we live in. Unfortunately, so where it's like instant validation, people. But it takes time. It takes mm. time. You get the likes. Just keep going. Keep posting. Have a strategy, and follow the strategy till the end. Or, or just keep just keep going. And if you see that it's not working, switch it up. Be adaptable. Make sure you can think, okay, this we've posted this five times. 
<laughs> no one's really. Maybe we should give. Up. Maybe we should give us something else. I I even give, I give an example. So one of my clients, we always used to post testimonials. Mm. So like, if when they got a good review, we will post it. Get a good review, post it. So we did that for like a month, and I think one or two likes ah. to the point where I'm even I'm going hey, to like hey. to try and then I thought. <laughs> I don't think people care about the testimonials, you Nobody know. Cares. No one cares. So I, t- I said to him, I was like, "Look, let's let's stop with the testimonials. We get it, you know." Then again, it might be all these bad people. <laughs> exactly. So why are you praising why yourself? <laughs> so yeah, we we just got rid of that and went mm. back to our normal sort of info giving out information kind of post. Mm. And that educating people is one of the top um, types of posting that you mm. can do as a content creator. Because that's that's where that bond they're starts. They're gaining something from it. Yes. They're not gaining anything from your testimonials, from, yes. but they're gaining from the information exactly. you're giving them to. So with more the testimonials, I think we we move that to the email marketing. Mm. So when at the end of an email, we just put the yeah, we're five star. So this rating. email marketing, I actually mm. wanted to ask you about it before. Okay. okay, um, when do you know that you need email marketing? Because for me, I feel like sometimes it's you just disturbing somebody's inbox. <laughs> Sending a bunch of yeah yes know? I know we all have our, all our inboxes are filled with things we've subscribed to yeah. and they are still sending it and we don't have the time to unsubscribe but it's actually a very good way of getting people's attention How? especially if they've actually subscribed to something that you put out mm. so for example again ebook get a free ebook on ten tips on how to do whatever cook the best meal that on on planet Earth. Then they subscribe to it and you have their email. So you mm. can keep sending them emails of other things you're doing. Mm. Checking in with them. Oh, I saw that you downloaded the book. Did you enjoy it? It sounded you like know. a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you downloaded the book. Did you that, like, but, I can see you like my website. Yes, yes. <laughs> so why don't you check out this? So in a way, it's a way of driving them to other parts of your business. Mm. So it's not just that one thing and done. So... To know when you need email marketing is if you have a large database of people that have okay. or their email addresses that that they've they've given you with their consent. And how do you you know get that kind of stuff? How do you get that kind of information from people? Again, it's you have to give them something. So there has to be an incentive to mm. get someone's email address. So ebooks, free information, PDFs, quick PDFs of how to do something. Mm. The, that's the best you see on Instagram you see we see even when we're scrolling we'll see something we like mm. click on it and they're like oh put your email address and first thing yeah and you think ah yeah it's free do it and that's that's that person's got access to you to you to directly because now yeah. they can market sell educate whatever they want to do to you directly mm. so that's and again email marketing is really one of the top ways that people are making money. even more than social media even more than social media oh 100% because if you've got a thousand email addresses mm. and they've bought they've already taken something from you, they're more likely to come to come back to you exactly. if you give them a paid offer. Like, okay, get a free ebook. But if you want more information, mm-hmm. get this for five pounds, seven pounds, even small things. I know people that are doing low ticket offers with mm. email marketing and they're making bank. Wow. Making bank. Like, or even if you're selling a course. Yeah, that's the perfect thing you should be doing. Email, email marketing. marketing. Wow. Okay. And one more question. Mm. So um, you've mentioned all these good ideas that anybody can pick up and try and use. So how does a person know when they need a specialist like you? Right. And not just doing it doing themselves. Doing it themselves. Yeah. There's, again, all the information I, I have, I learned, that I learned it myself as well. Mm. I, went, I went and studied it. So if you want to do it yourself, it's fine. Where I come in is I... I narrow the road. Oh, <laughs> I narrow the road for you. So I literally just point, I tell you, this is what you need to be doing. Mm. And this is how we're going to do it. So that's, I just make it easier for you. So you're not overthinking because there's, you can have information overload as well. Because when you go into this, then you're thinking, oh, but this guy said do this. This guy said this. No. What I'm coming to do is just direct the ship. Like, mm. okay. So you're not doing it yourself or your client? Sorry, say that again. You're not the one doing it for your clients. Oh no, I am doing it for them. Okay. Obviously, that's uh, that that's the service I offer. But mm, it's just they might not have the time. They might not have the time. Yeah. yeah, that's that's another thing. We've, we've some clients don't have the time to be posted, so they send me the content. Then I I'll do it for them. Mm-hmm. So yes, I I can do it for you as well. I can guide you. I have different um, ways of helping different businesses. So it just depends. Some businesses, especially the ones that have like a social media team. 
you can't really they have a team so you, you you're not going to take on the content yourself yeah. so what you do is you t- tell them what to do and mm-hmm. how to do it basically like a consultant kind of thing like okay you guys do da 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 and boom because it's not every client that you can literally um walk through and mm-hmm. hand hold their yeah. hands and post for them and then so it just depends on the client okay. so do you have any other information that could help anyone out there with the digital marketing um what just that just that wants to go into it or so anyone that yeah wants to be better at it better at yeah. it man, just keep learning mm. 100% even i'm still learning you that in life we have to we have to, we just have to have that learning mm. culture because that's how we improve so what what ways did you used to learn did you go on you know courses online did yeah you... so uh, free courses hubspot do free courses for digital marketing that's how i started and literally i went through all of the courses just in maybe 3 months just mm-hmm. going at it and it was fun it's and it's really basic to start with so you don't need to worry about or oh, maybe you're learning too many things it's literally it's it's spoon feeding you the information in a way you can understand and then if you choose you can decide to go different levels if you want to do ads maybe you can go there's free ads programs on Google mm-hmm. where you can just do the the course certified Google certified and you're done so I'd say just l- keep learning, be adaptable. You you need to be able to adapt. I like how you're easily just giving out information. You know, some <laughs> people they don't want other people to <laughs> no. to do what they're doing. So, like, so okay, if, I'm not if gonna someone give. didn't give me the information, yeah. I wouldn't know all the things I know as well. So I never, I would never gatekeep. And never afraid of giving yeah, it back. To never people. gatekeep any information because wow. you don't know who you're going to inspire by doing that. So. Hundred percent. I would even anyone that wants to even get into digital marketing, do it. Honestly, your life will change because one flexibility mm. of being able to work wherever, whenever, and wherever you want to is that was my top reason mm. <laughs> for joy because working, having kids, you know, it's not easy. It's so crazy. if you have <laughs> if you have a way of bringing it, you know, to you where you are in control of it. Mm then that's the first step, I think, to a proper happy life. Not necessarily the money, mm-hmm. because you just have time. You can spend time with your wife, your kids. So that's, for me, that was obviously a big thing on to why I did it. So so how can people contact you? You can find me on Instagram, Digital Marketing Mike. Follow me. I give out tips here and there. And my website, msdigital.tech. And I'm on LinkedIn as well, Michael A. Silva. So, yeah, find me, contact me. If you have any t- tips you want to give me, I'll take it. I'll give you tips if you want. And, yeah, let's just grow. Make a community of network together and see where it goes. Oh, thank you, Michael. So, I didn't tell you about this part of the show. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, okay, we have three numbers. Number one, number two, number three. People can see what they both, they all stand for on the screen. Okay. Number one, what number one says, what number two okay. says, and what number three says. Okay. So, I need you to pick one of the numbers. And whatever mm. you've picked, you will have to do it. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Mm. Number three. Number three. Yeah. Okay. Or number three says is sing the chorus of one of your favorite songs. <laughs> <laughs> one of your favorite songs from childhood. <laughs> from childhood. Ooh. Like those um, teenage years. <laughs> like I'm th- oh, one of my favorite songs was, is, I even watched it recently. What's the Sound of Music. Oh, so you're going to sing something? I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> you have to but sing. I'll, um, <laughs> Do a dare, a female dare, rare, a drop of golden sun. <laughs> me, uh, uh, yeah, me, a name I call myself for uh, a longer way More energy, more energy, more passion. <laughs> so, a needle's rolling thread, love of no to follow so, tea, I drink with jam and bread. <laughs> And that will bring us back to do. do. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Your singing is 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 a bit. I know. I know. I know. But your marketing is better. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Pleasure. To the today. Absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. So if you enjoyed that, don't forget to check Michael out online on Instagram, on LinkedIn, or on his website. And you can also try and book with him and you know have him show you how to do digital marketing and how to improve your business so thank you for watching don't forget to like subscribe and drop a comment take care tune in each week don't forget to like subscribe and leave a review or comment